Sutra. Before he became a monk, he was the king of a small country and was friendly with the king of a neighboring country. Both kings practiced the ten wholesome deeds and benefited beings. Because the citizens of those two neighboring countries did many bad things, the two kings made a plan using far-reaching experience. One king vowed to quickly become a Buddha and then rescue absolutely all the other beings. The other king vowed, I do not want to become a Buddha until I first rescue all those who are suffering for their offenses, enabling them to fight peace and finally to reach a body. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Samadhi self-mastery king, the king who vowed to quickly become a Buddha is an all-knowledge accomplished first come one. The king who vowed to keep saving beings who are suffering for their offenses rather than become a Buddha is an earth star Bodhisattva. Commentary Before he became a monk, before his all-knowledge accomplished first come one left, the householder's life. He was the king of a small country and was friendly with the king of a neighboring country. He was friends with a neighboring country, with a neighboring king. Both kings practiced the ten wholesome deeds, which are not killing, not stealing, not committing sexual misconduct, not being greedy, not being angry, not being deluded not speaking harshly, not lying, not speaking frivolously, and not speaking divisively. They did these ten kinds of good deeds and benefited beings. Because all the citizens of those two neighboring countries did many bad things, the two kings held a discussion, thought of some ways, and made a plan using far-reaching experience to help their people. One king vowed to quickly become a Buddha. One of the kings made a vow that said, I hope I will become a Buddha soon. What will he do once he becomes a Buddha soon? Once he becomes a Buddha, he will then do a good job of rescuing absolutely all the other beings who are creating evil. Without exception, all evil creating beings will be saved. The other king vowed, I do not want to become a Buddha until I first rescue all those who are suffering for their offenses, enabling them to fight peace and finally to reach a body. If I do not first save all beings who created evil and their offenses so that they live a suffering and reach a peace and happiness and even to Buddhahood, I will never become a Buddha. I must save all beings before I become a Buddha. I will not become a Buddha if there is still one being who is not yet a Buddha. The Buddha told the Bodhisattva Samadhi Self Mastery King, the king who vowed to quickly become a Buddha is the first come one we just talked about. All knowledge accomplished first come one. The king who vowed to keep saving beings who are suffering for their offenses rather than become a Buddha is an earth star Bodhisattva, who is the king who refuses to become a Buddha if there is any being not yet a Buddha. He is an earth star Bodhisattva, and that is a vow he made in the past. Sutra Another time, we meet this Assam here years ago. A Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes first came and appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 years. In his Dharma image age, Anahat, who had accumulated blessings from rescuing beings, met a woman named Bright Eyes, who offered a meal to him once while he was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? asked the Ahat. Bright Eyes replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now. Sympathizing with her, the heart entered Samadhi to contemplate and saw that Bright Eye's mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The heart asked, Bright Eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create while alive 
that makes her now help to undergo such terrible suffering in a bad destiny. Bright eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and other sea creatures. She especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Oh, venerable one, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. The young heart took pity on bright eyes and used his skillful means. He urged bright eyes thus, with a sincere resolve, be mindful of pure lotus eyes thus come one and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. Commentary Another time, Limitless Asafriya is a girl. A Buddha named Pure Lotus Eyes thus come one appeared in the world. His lifespan was 40 years. In his Dharma image age, the Dharma image age after this Buddha entered Nirvana. On a heart who certified to the fusion and who had accumulated blessings to rescue beings, met a woman named Bright Eyes who offered a meal to him once a while. He was teaching and transforming beings. What is your wish? What do you wish in return for your offering to me? What advantages are you hoping for? Asked the Ahat. Bright Eyes replied, On the day of my mother's death, I performed meritorious deeds to rescue her, but I do not know where my mother is now. In which realm did my mother become reborn? Sympathizing with her, the Ahat meditated, entered Samadhi to contemplate, and saw that Bright Eyes' mother had fallen into a bad destiny where she was undergoing extreme suffering. The Ahat saw these days and asked, Bright Eyes, what unwholesome karma did your mother create? Why a life that makes her now have to undergo such a terrible suffering in a bad destiny in the house? Bright Eyes replied, My mother enjoyed eating fish, turtles, and other sea creatures. She did not eat only fish and turtles. What else did she eat? She especially liked to fry or broil fish and turtle eggs. She ate with an abandoned indulgence. She forgets everything else, including her life, when she has food like this in front of her. Every time she ate those, she took thousands of lives. Were we to count the number of lives she took, there would be as many as billions upon billions. Oh, venerable one, please be compassionate and tell me how she can be saved. Please think of a way to save my mother. The heart took pity on bright eyes and used his skillful means. He urged bright eyes thus, with sincere resolve, be mindful of pure lotus eyes thus come one, and also make carved and painted images of him. When you do so, both the living and the dead will be rewarded. This way, you and your mother both acquire benefits, whether those alive or passed away experiences advantages. Sutra, bright eyes are heard that, quickly renounced everything she loved, and swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha. Then she made offerings before them. The reverence she felt moved her to tears, and she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, emitting great light, he said to Bright Eyes, your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as an infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Shortly thereafter, a maidservant in the household bore a son who spoke before he was three days old. Lowering his head and weeping, he said to bright eyes, The comic conditions we create during our lives and deaths Results in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. I am your mother and have been in darkness for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, 
I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Thirteen years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? Commentary. Bright eyes heard that a heart teach her to pay respects and make offerings to pure lotus eyes thus come one. So she quickly renounced, exchanged or sold everything she loved the way the Brahman woman sold her house as mentioned earlier. This woman bright eyes sold everything she cherished. The most precious, valuable and impossible to give up things were given away or sold. And he, she swiftly commissioned painted images of the Buddha on paper, silk, and other fabric. Then she made offerings of incense, flowers, lamps, candles, and fruits, and different kinds of food, clothing, and bedding before them. The most sincere reverence she felt moved her to tears, and she wept in grief as she beheld and bowed to the Buddha. Since she knew that her mother fell into one of the evil realms and is enduring the suffering of that evil realm, she sobbed out of sadness. She took a look at the Buddha image and bowed. Suddenly, near the end of the night, in a dream, she saw that Buddha's body. It felt like a dream, though it was not a dream, since she was extremely sincere. She experienced a state where, response and the way intertwined, she saw a Buddha in her room. If the sutra were just to say that she saw a vision, it may seem too strange. So the sutra says that she saw a Buddha in a dream. The Buddha, dazzling gold in color and as large as Mount Sumeru, emitting great light. He said to grab bright eyes. Your mother will be born in your household before long, and as soon as that infant can feel hunger and cold, he will speak. Just you wait. Shortly thereafter, a maid servant in the house of Boy Sun, to who spoke before he was three days old. Maid servants are usually of a lower class and has to do what their employers order. So soon, their maid gave birth to a son. Usually, children start talking at the age of three or four, but this child was not yet three days old and can speak. What did he say? Lowering his head as if bowing to the Buddha image and weeping, he said to bright eyes, The karmic conditions we create during our lives and deaths results in retributions that we ourselves must undergo. We must face positive and negative consequences ourselves. I am your mother and have been in darkness, devoid of light from the sun, the moon, or the stars for a long time. Since you and I parted, I have repeatedly fallen into the great house. Upon receiving the power of your blessings, for which I am very grateful, I have been reborn as a servant's child with a short lifespan. Although reincarnated as a human being, I am of a lower class that is not so critical as I will die an early death. Thirteen years from now, I will fall into the evil paths again. Do you have some way to free me so that I can avoid them? Hurry up and think of a way to liberate me from the suffering in the evil realms. Sutra when Bright Eyes heard those words, she knew without a doubt that they were her mother's. Choked with sobs, she said to the servants, tried, Since you were my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil paths? The maid servant's son answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma, killing and slandering. Had I not received the blessings you earned to rescue me from difficulty, I would not yet be released from that karma. Bright Eyes asked, What happens in the house when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? The, the maiden's son answered, I can't bear to speak of the ways in which beings suffer for their offenses. 
Even if I were to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about. When Bright Eyes heard that, she wept bitterly and spoke into the air, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. At the end of these thirteen years, she will be done with her heavy offenses and will not go back to the evil paths. O oh, Buddhas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths, is never again born into low stations, and will never again be female, then here before the image of pure lotus eyes at first come on, I vow that from this day on, Throughout millions of billions of eons, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the house or the three evil paths of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies of the house, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. Only after beings with such retributions have all become Buddhas will I myself achieve proper enlightenment. After making that vow, she clearly heard pure lotus eyes thus come and say to her, Bright eyes, show in great compassion and sympathy, we reach your mother through this mighty vow that you are making. My contemplation shows me that after 13 years, your mother will be done with this retribution and will be born as a Brahman with a lifespan of 100 years. After that retribution, she will be born in the land of no concern with a lifespan of uncountable eons. Later, she will realize the fruition of Buddhahood and save people and gods as numerous as sand grains in the Ganges. Shakyamuni Buddha told Samadhi Self Master Riking, The heart whose blessings have bright eyes then is now inexhaustible intention Bodhisattva. The mother of bright eyes is now liberation Bodhisattva. Bright Eye herself is now Earth Star Bodhisattva. Commentary When Bright Eyes heard those words from her mid's newborn son, she knew without a doubt that they were her mothers. She knew without a doubt that the child was formerly her mother. Choked with sobs, she could hardly speak or cry out loud. She cannot seem to laugh or cry even if she wants to. She is all choked up because she is extremely sad. Then she said to the servant's child, Since you were my mother, you should know your own past offenses. What unwholesome karma did you create that made you fall into the evil paths? The maidservant's son answered, I am undergoing retribution for two kinds of karma, killing and slandering. She killed a lot of fish eggs because she liked her boys or fried fish and total eggs. This type of karma from killing is tremendous. She slandered the triple jewel and spoke harshly so many beings. Two types of serious offenses led her to face this type of retribution. Had I not received the blessings you earned to rescue me from difficulty, I would not yet be released from that karma. Based on the karma I created, I should not have been released from my suffering yet. Bright Eyes asked, What happens in the house when beings undergo retribution for their offenses? Can you tell me? The maidservant's son answered Bright Eyes, I can't be on there and find it impossible to speak of the ways in which beings suffer for their offenses. You see, some people are sitting here listening to the sutras and consider it painful. What do you think? They would do were they to fall into the house. In the face of mister, uh, misery, you say, I do not want to be there to bear punishment. That is impossible to escape. Without atoning our offenses, it would be impossible to wish out of suffering in the house. So while undergoing some pain in the human realm, think, oh, this is much better than the misery in the house. Suffering in the house is much more severe. If you can think that way, then you will be happy wherever you are. There will be no insufferable places. 
you will not find pains in the legs painful. For example, you see in the house a ghost stick with you with a fork and drop you in a pot of oil. Is that miserable? If you say, gee, I cannot stand it, please do not put me in that pot of oil. They will not listen to you. There is no favor to speak of. Is that miserable? In fact, they fry you over and over again so that you suffer more. Even if I were to live for a hundred thousand years, I would find it hard to talk about or to finish talk about such pain at once. When Bright Eyes heard that, she wept bitterly. See how in the past, Earth's Dobody Sattva could do nothing but cry. Others do not even have such capabilities. She sobbed and wept loudly. Oh, what do I do? And spoke into the air. Since there was nothing she could do, she could only speak to the air, saying, I vow that my mother will be released from the house forever. Fortunately, Bright Eyes' mother has such a filial daughter, without whom the mother could not have come out of the house so easily because she had taken many lives and yelled at many people. These are the reasons why she suffered in the house. Fortunately, the mother had this filial daughter who made a vow that her mother may forever be released from the suffering in the house. At the end of these 13 years, when her life ended, she will be done with her heavy offenses and will not go back to the evil paths. O Buddhas and Bodhisattvas of the Ten Directions, with your compassion and sympathy, please listen to the vast and mighty vow that I am making for the sake of my mother. Be my witness. If my mother never again enters the three evil paths of the hell beings, hungry ghosts, and animals, where they experience the pain of knives, blood, and fire. If she is never again born into low stations, such as that of a servant's family, and will never again be female, then here before the image of pure lotus eyes does come one. I vow that from this day on, throughout millions and billions of years, I will respond to all beings who are undergoing suffering for their offenses in the house or the three evil paths, the house, the realm of hungry ghosts, and the realm of animals of any world. I vow to rescue them from the bad destinies and the sufferings of the house, hungry ghosts, animals, and the like. You should know, if a earth star bodhisattva had not made such great vows, we would probably be suffering in the house, in the realm of hungry ghosts, or in the realm of animals too. The reason that we can be humans now all comes from this vow that earth star bodhisattva made infinite years ago. We are consequently rescued from the house, from the realm of hungry ghosts, or from the realm of animals. Since we since we do not have the penetration of past lives or the penetration of the heavenly eye, we do not realize how much benefit and compassion we received from Earth Star Bodhisattva before. None of us knows the benefit and kindness that he gave us. If Earth Star Bodhisattva had not made such a great vow a long time ago, we would be in tremendous danger. This is why we must be grateful to Earth Star Bodhisattva and maintain the resolve to repay his kindness only after beings with such retributions.